Hey, what is up, guys? My name is Guillaume for Tomans Guitars and Basses today with Jamie Stillman from Earthquaker Devices. How are you? I am great. Yeah. I'm thrilled to be here. I'm very, very happy to have you. Uh, you came in with some of the new things, uh, some of the new additions to the uh, Earthquaker Devices lineup. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about the brand a little bit in, in more general terms as well, like where you guys are coming from, where you're headed in terms of, you know, uh, we'll, we'll get to that. Yeah. But let's start with the practical things at hand. Okay. Uh, the first one, the, the first new additions on the on the board being the Blooms. Yeah. Love, yeah. <laughs> yes. That's new. That's yeah. a new pedal. Right. Yeah. Would it, <laughs> would it be based on what the Plumes were? <laughs> uh, clever enough, yeah. it is a base version of the Plumes. Okay, okay. That's why it's called Blooms. Okay, uh, but is it like really tailored just for bass? Yeah, it is. Uh, it's just, it, it has the same voicing yeah. of the Plumes. Like we had a Plumes here to A, B, M. Like yeah. they sound the same. It just has a much lower like frequency response. It lets a lot right. more low end through. And then there's also double the gain. And it works great with guitar too, especially down tuned guitars, but it's just, you know, the plumes cuts some low end out of the, out of the signal. Right. So this puts it back. Yeah. I yeah. I, I, I gotta say, like, I, I had no idea that it was not main, like if you, if nobody tells you that it's not meant for guitar, you're going to use it with guitar. Right. right. And it sounds yeah. pretty phenomenal. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's it's like the same tone of the blooms. Like the mids are still pushed. It's still yeah, yeah, kind yeah. of a tight response, but like yeah. the low end is is it's much bigger. Yeah, I yeah. added the park fuzz on the because you guys know me and you know that this is my favorite fuzz. And so we, uh, I just wanted something in that just in case. Just I knew we were going to play with delay and modulated delay uh, to hell and back today, but I still wanted to have the option. <laughs> Then onwards from the blooms to the silos. Yeah, this pedal is a little bit of a story to it. We've, I think people at this point have noticed we've released a bit of a series of yeah. pedals this year. They all have like the same general functionality. If there's expression con uh, control on the side yeah. and you can assign that to any of the three main controls. There's three modes in every one of the effects. Mm -hmm. And then there's this really simple way to save and recall presets. Yeah. And then like a very intuitive kind of analog way of accessing them. Yeah. So that whole concept is like I wanted to make these like really easy to use kind of, uh, for lack of a better term, basic effects. But what I mean by that is like delay, reverb, chorus, things like that. But like the there would be a lot of thought and kind of care put into like sculpting the sound. Yeah. Like these. In this one is actually the first one that I worked on silos of this series like four four or five years ago, but it's the most recent one that came out. Yeah. And it's a digital analog and tape delay mm -hmm. in there. And like the the digital delay isn't really modeled on any particular kind of delay, but the idea, like I really, like a thing that I really love about like digital delay is the repeats are like really strong and yeah. always there present. You can do like the cool stuttering thing. But sometimes I felt like that could get in the way so it was like, how do I make a delay where the, the repeats are like strong and present the whole time, but they, they will eventually get sit in the back without sounding like too low fi or too tinny. Mm -hmm. So it was like with every repeat, the super top end kind of gets rolled off. So they immediately go to the back, right, but right. every one just is present. So it's like really fun to play off of like almost like a little looper. Like that's how I was looking at this like mode. Oh, but, that's interesting. Yeah. That's a really cool way to look at it. Okay, the uh, and so that's for the that's for the the digital digital mode. mode. Okay, those like are the that, three that, modes. That so first one, digital, and then analog, analog, yeah, which is modeled after my favorite analog delay, which is also like the first effect pedal I ever bought. Is a mm -hmm. KMD analog delay, which is like well, essentially a Boss DM2 with okay, a tone control. Okay. okay. 
Okay. Yeah. We'll put a picture on it. I have no clue where I it love, is. I like, love the thing. Yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> Was it like bucket brigade type? Yeah, it's a bucket brigade. Oh, okay. It's like 300 millisecond delay. It's really right. kind of like, what I liked about it is like the mid-range. Okay. It. Like I felt like with the tone control, the mid-range was always present, but it kind of got dark as the repeats rolled yeah. off. Um, and again, it's sort of one of those things where like the delay's present. You can tell you're playing a delay, but it almost shows up as like reverb. Like after the first repeat. Right, okay, okay. It's like that cloud underneath what you're playing. Huh. You know, a little bit, little, little dark, little, little dirty, mm -hmm. and then the last mode is tape delay, which is kind of like we've got two echo plexes, an EP3 and an EP4, mm -hmm. and then a roll in space echo, and then these two oil can delays, a, a Telray add an echo and a Telray organ tone, mm -hmm. and those are just like really dark, kind of vibey yeah. things, yeah. and then the tape delays I have are all dirty. <laughs> <laughs> and kind of distorted and noisy each in their own way. Right. And this was me trying to like combine all, all my favorite <laughs> things of those sounds into one mode. So like it gets dark really quick. There's distortion. Like the harder you hit it, the more it will distort. Just like it's, yeah, it's so you can hear like what I, what I mean, like they're still very strong and like present, but they will go to the back and yeah. like not get in the way. Unless yeah. you want them to, if you play like really staccato, like yeah, yeah, hard yeah. off of it. When you get into the uh, analog and the tape delay, they yeah. do go into self-oscillation and they'll build up. Like it depends on how hard you're hitting yeah, it, yeah. but they'll build up like starting like around one. So I'll leave it there. I'll just flip over. Okay. And then... Yeah, but the feedback was keeping at the yeah. end of it as well. Yeah, that's really, really nice. Yeah, and like you can hear it just sort of like the way that it builds up just kind of forms this like cloud underneath. Yeah, it. yeah, what yeah. It sounds like reverb really unless until you start getting into longer delay times, but yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Like as I was playing chords, I, I was trying to figure out what the song was. It's something Red Hot Chili Peppers, but I can't remember the title <laughs> of it. But anyways, uh, like that's the... The the by by the second or third chord you usually notice when you're not playing in time with the delay. Yeah. This one was just kind of doing its own thing in the background, like yeah. feeding itself up, and then you could just kind of play the melody mm -hmm. without being bothered by the fact that it's not. Yeah. On the on and the that, and that's what I love so much yeah. about the the KMD. Like I used that in my band for like the whole the whole time we were together like, yeah. touring. Like it was like nine years. I just used that pedal, and it didn't ever matter where I set the delay time because I was using it when I wanted it just to sound huge. Yeah, yeah. And it was especially it was like if you like you know went up with octave chords and like played stuff fast, it would just make this like big, like awesome, awesome sound yeah. out of it. <laughs> it didn't matter what the time was. And it like makes it, it's kind of like a, just like a vibey thing. And then if you hit the strings really yeah. hard, it'll distort in its repeats. Okay. Yeah, it does us a little bit, yeah. yeah. But it's like dynamically controlled. Yeah. There's like a... Uh, envelope distortion on it that you can't you can barely tell it's there but the harder you hit it like then it'll start to saturate like that right. which is something that i really like that my, my space echo did it a, yeah. a lot yeah moving on so the astral destiny i put on the board because i, I found absolutely gorgeous uh this pedal came out four years ago i want to say like yeah something like that yeah, but i had worked on it for years up to that point and like where astral destiny started yeah is so different from where it ended it started as just this like crazy modulated reverb and then ended as this what i think is just a very nice octave reverb it also has crazy modulation in yeah it, but yeah it, 
I think it has like some pretty unique uh, functionality okay. and like kind of sounds in it that aren't typically in like a lot of like reverbs. <laughs> and you know, some of it requires some, uh, you know, you got to play to the pedal itself, but like, you know, like the ascending and descending modes, where yeah. it's just like kind of spiraling out of control in octaves. Okay. And then the astral mode where it's just like, I'm, I, a very pleasant mess of oct <laughs> octaves and fifths. I think. <laughs> Can you maybe dig into like really sub things obscure that the only the designer would like kind of <laughs> be able to find its way well, too quickly. <laughs> yes, I can, I can do that. The one thing I think like if, if people read the manual, they, yeah. they will find this yeah, very, yeah, yeah, very, yeah. very quickly. But like, it's a thing that I really like, which is like setting the length of the stretch and then activating it like while you're playing. So I'll, I'll put it in like, what is my favorite reverb setting? Please do, yeah. Uh, I'm going to turn the modulation down a little bit just so it's not so crazy. <laughs> and then if you play, I'll, I'll show you. The All right. Again, <laughs> see it used a lot like in soundtrack work, yeah, stuff, like oh, not just with guitar, like, especially with like synths or like yeah. other like bowed stringed instruments, yeah. like vocal stuff like that. It can do a lot of stuff, especially with like the modulation. A lot of times, like if you're just trying to play through a reverb like this with right. modulation and all these octaves and stuff, it's like, oh, that's really messy, but it's definitely like a kind of like a pedal that you know, you can do very little through and the pedal, let the pedal do like all the Yeah, things. yeah, yeah. It can create all these like super cool sounds. So how would you describe Time Shadows? Well, first- Not, <laughs> not explain, not explain, but describe. Describe it? <laughs> uh, I would call it a delay synthesizer. That's, okay. That's what I would, that would okay. in, at its heart, that's what I think it is. Okay. So, um, you know, there's two main programs in this pedal. The one on the far left is the Earthquaker one. Yeah. Design it, is a, it is a collaboration. Yeah, uh, and the one yeah. on the far right is a death by audio voice. There's one in the middle, mm -hmm. and the backstory on that is we did a thousand of these to begin with, like in, in, 20, in November of 2020. People discovered uh, about a month after it came out that there was, you could force, that one had a two position toggle, so yeah, people yeah, figured yeah. out you could force it into the middle, and it would you could access this other bizarre pitch shifter. Yeah. And a couple of people told me that, and I was like, I don't, what are you talking about? Like, <laughs> there is no pitch shifter. And then they're like, no, there is. And they showed it to me and I was like, oh, uh -oh. oops. <laughs> <clears throat> it was a, a program that was unfinished that was left on the master EEPROM that was copied yeah, yeah, yeah. for the, the pedal. Uh, so with this new version, I found that program and I completed it and stuck it in here on there is the middle position. Um, and so there are now three voices in it, and I think all three are wildly different. But at the heart, they are synthesizer, -like yeah, yeah, based delays or delay based synthesizers. So real quick, time is time, span is repeats. Yeah, okay, we'll call it that. On easy, the easy. EQD side, filter controls an envelope sensitivity. Mm -hmm. So this is typically good for like any kind of pickup. So I'll leave it there. <laughs> 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 what is 
is this? <laughs> okay. I, I view this voice as like a very symphonic kind oh, of a yeah. thing. Like oh, to me, it sounds like Zimmer it sounds like, like brass soundtrack. and like cello and like timpani, like all yeah, at the yeah, same yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. This voice is dynamically controlled. Like there's an envelope that not only sweeps the filter, it yeah. also opens up a VCA. Okay. So the guitar gets turned into a square wave fuzz, is run parallel with the sub octave, goes into this VCA, and then goes into a delay. So the VCA will, oh, sorry, through the filter into the VCA into a delay. So the filter frequency. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm good. I'm good. I'm full. The I'm filter full frequency. Yeah. And the VCA will like close at different rates, open and close at different rates. So it get, acts like a gate, the VCA at the yeah. end. So as soon as you're done playing, that shuts, but it like still resonates within the delay. Yeah, okay. But if you turn like the delay off and like you kind of start playing really lightly and then like build up into it, it does this really cool kind of like bowed guitar sound, I think. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's just so weird. Wow. And then, like, if you turn the filter all the way up and just play like big chords, yeah, yeah. it's like this massive sub octave distortion. Like, Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. so that's the, so that's, that's that's the Earthquaker. The Earthquaker side. Okay. Now, wow. the Death by Audio side is, uh, in some ways, a little bit easier to understand, mm -hmm. but in other ways, like, Oliver from Death by Audio so explained yeah. to me, like, what the filter control is doing a bunch. Yeah. And, like, I'm always like, what? I, I, yeah, I get it. And then I'm like, oh, shit, it's doing so much. Um, it's, like, both, like, changing a filter frequency mm -hmm. and, like, like the width of a flange at the same time. So it's almost, like, manually flanging. And this mode, like, that is totally worth assigning the expression control to and manipulating it, like, when you're playing. Right. Like, my favorite sound is, like, when you kind of, like, open the filter all the way up, it forms this, like, really crystal-like delay sound. Like... It's, that's that's kind of wild in itself, like the fact that there was like how much communication was there, like between you guys developing those Not things very and like, much. Like, coming it, together. There was like a, there was a like a set of rules essentially, like okay, three okay. controls. That's all you get. Right. And that's it. And right. then, you know, like an idea of what I think my voice was done first, like yeah. a kind of an idea of like what mine was, and then it was like go, yeah. and like without hearing it, like they were, I, I feel like they were very. Similar. I think we each tweaked ours just a little bit. Mm. Like after we heard the other yeah, one, yeah, yeah. it's like that's that. Yeah, that's epic. Uh, and then this middle one, yeah, is bananas. I mean, that's I can I'm aware of it. Uh, uh, like <laughs> what, what is happening in it is is two 500 millisecond delays running in parallel. Yeah, one of them is shifting up a third, and one of them is shifting down a cent <laughs> with every repeat. And <laughs> You know, again, that's one of those things you just try to play a bunch of chords through. It's, kind of, it's yeah, total, yeah, yeah. total chaos. But, like, if you play, like, really rhythmically and, like, staccato, like, yeah. you can do some really cool stuff with it. I also find that, like, playing chromatically oh, like, yeah, really, yeah, yeah, really yeah, yeah. works yeah. well with it. I 
<laughs> that have no idea of tempo, have no idea of key anymore. I don't know what is happening. It's amazing. It feels like I'm getting defeated in an 8-bit video game yes, exactly. every time I play a note. Yeah, yeah. This is <laughs> Yeah, this is it. This is, I fell into something is what just happened. Yeah. <laughs> you, you're going to have to transition into the next one. I still don't really know how to move on from yeah, that. <laughs> The disaster transport. <laughs> so, right, yeah, we're on, we're on. Okay, well, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. <laughs> there is a very long story involved in it, yeah. or like a short one. <laughs> I, oh, I've, I've got time. If you've okay. got time, I'll, I'll, I'll do Actually, the, it's the super Actually, it's not that long. Yeah. It's just confusing as hell. Okay, okay. Uh, we have released a bunch of pedals called disaster transport. Yes. Uh, the ones that I think people are more familiar with were in like a vertical format. They still had like activate switches for like the bypass and then the modulation switch. Yeah. But it was a completely different voice than this one. Mm -hmm. Then we also had a Disaster Transport Junior, which was a small one. Mm -hmm. Also a different voice from both of these with no modulation. And then to further confuse it, we had a Disaster Transport Senior, which was its own delay voice <laughs> with modulation. And then another second delay with reverb. This one is none of those. Okay. Okay. <laughs> but it shares the same name. This is actually when Earthquaker first started. Uh, this was our delay pedal. Yeah. I, I made this disaster transport. And I think it was like, you know, we kind of started to, to make a little bit of a name for ourselves with the hoof fuzz. Mm -hmm. And then this came out. And at the time, there weren't very many like delay pedals, <laughs> like boutique delay yeah, pedals. Yeah, yeah. There's little alone ones with modulation. And this one had some pretty bizarre modulation. Um, I only made like, uh, probably less than a hundred, I think, mm -hmm. of them before. Like it got, it was only me making pedals, so yeah, it, yeah, it got yeah. like so stressful to make them because I was like etching all the circuit boards and drilling them all out and oh, there was a lot of wiring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That my answer to demand was discontinue it. Yeah, because I can't, keep, I can't like, keep up can't with do this it. anymore. Yeah, 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 and then like when we first, you know, got some employees, then I brought it back, but in that new format. Yeah, we would occasionally get these ones back, these original ones back in for repair, and there was yeah. just something about them. Like every time we'd get them, the repair guy would bring it up and be like, "We have another old one. Do you want to check it out?" Yeah, I just really liked it. Um, and then we started doing this like legacy reissue series a couple mm -hmm. of years ago, which is like you know. We've been around a long time. We you have to discontinue the product sometimes. <laughs> for sure. So we would bring old pedals back for like a short run of a of like a thousand or something. Mm -hmm. um, this is one of those those pedals. Like I just it was always in my mind. Like I loved it so much when I would play through it when they'd come back in. That it's like we should we should redo we should it do as it was. Um, I made a couple small changes. The modulation on the original was just all. It's a, it's like a, a ramp wave. So mm -hmm. like. Well, it's like it's dragging the delay time and then drops. So yeah. it's a very weird sound. You could back off on the intensity and get it to sound a little bit more traditional, like chorus. But yeah. like I kind of furthered that by ending this, adding this uh, bend and stretch switch. Okay. So stretch is how it was. Okay. Bend is a little bit more subtle, and then I split it up into three uh, speeds. There's a, a fast, medium, and a slow. Yeah. Before it was just fast and slow. Yeah. I kind of always felt like it was missing and something like something right in right the, in the in middle. Um, and you can make it sound really nice and beautiful, or you can make it sound really broken and disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> um, I personally kind of like to just, just kind of subtle, like, uh, like modulation settings on it. the perfect modulation speed it's just yeah. like, it's and just exactly what it, no. yeah it's like the rate is set, set yeah. kind of high but it's like backed way off yeah so like yeah, it just yeah. kind of adds body to yeah, it exactly whereas like if you just bring that intensity up it's gonna just, just make it weird. yeah yeah okay fair enough <laughs>
I, I just think the the delay in itself, like there's something about it that just sounds. Yeah, I think uh, I feel like the delay tone itself is like to to my ears like yeah. perfectly lo-fi. Yeah, like it's exactly. a little bit noisy. It's a little bit like uh, it gets thinner as it decays. Yeah. It gets brighter, but there's something really pleasant about that. And yeah. when you add subtle modulation on it, I feel like it just becomes like. Like it doesn't get in the way, but it just becomes like thicker and yeah, just like well, no, hundred like, really, like kind of strengthen the tone of it. But then, like you know, you could just turn up the intensity and just make it, it goes make other it, make places. It yeah, no, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> as a as a pedal maker, uh, do you find yourself going more towards like you know going back to to certain things like the disaster transport? As time goes on, like, I mean, our whole line is essentially what my tastes are at the time. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and not so much paying attention to, like, what the trends are mm -hmm. at the moment or even, like, understanding what the trends <laughs> are. Like, sometimes I look at stuff, I'm like, whoa, uh. okay. Uh, you know, what I'm leaning towards now is, mm -hmm. like, just like really simple stuff like a lot of feedback i've gotten from a lot of my friends who are like professional touring musicians and stuff is like can you make that with one knob that you just yeah you just do that and it just it's yeah. perfect and like i don't have to think about it you turn it on it's kind of like well, how where i'm at with that stuff is like well how can i make like really good sounding creative effects like yeah. both in terms of like what they are like i'm not t like so tied up in like i need to blow the world open with advancements yeah yeah, yeah, like, yeah what 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 makes you want to play like yeah. like how can you like make something like really interactive with the least amount of controls possible but it has really like nice sounds in it and yeah. they can morph into like really wild or like disgusting sounds like things like that like both musical and adventurous i think yeah. at the same time and then just like really simple to use uh small formats stuff like that that's like the kind of stuff that like right now right. i'm really into Next year, it could be totally insane. Like, you know, for years, I was just really bent on, like, atonal, like, guitar synthesis <laughs> and stuff. Where I was like, I love it. Noise. <laughs> uh, yeah, or just, like, square wave fuzz and yeah. stuff like that. But, like, that's where I think, like, I'm, I'm kind of headed. And I like kind of incorporating, like, some of these, like, modern features of, like, presets and, like, like assignability of, like, expression control and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, but, like, run in a way where you don't. Have a, to have like a degree in computer programming to like learn how to like access yeah. them and stuff. Where it's like you have seven thousand on the pedal, and then you plug MIDI in and you get four thousand more. Yeah. You're gonna remember what all, they all are, right? <laughs> you need that space. You yeah, need yeah. it. I hate it. I hate all that stuff. So I'm kind of like working on like an antithesis of like right. taking that stuff, but like using it a little bit. Where it's just like you know you can have a memorable amount and you access it like in an analog kind of like familiar way. Yeah. And I'm very much like a tactile kind of like analog person when it really comes down to it. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, check out the links below to all these pedals, to all everything Earthquake or devices, everything Jamie Stillman. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in the comments. If you have any further questions, I'll read the manuals and I'll try to answer them. And we'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye.